whose idea was it for Corsa to put a, a headgear on? His his idea. It used to be like a baseball hat, and then he was at Ohio State. He saw Brutus, Buckeye, and uh, Kirk Herbstreet's wife, Allison, was part of the cheer squad, and she had connections because no one had touched that thing. Like, you know, <laughs> certain, certain things are sacred. <laughs> like, you can't touch the mask. The idea that you should take off Brutus's head yes. and put it on a human on TV <laughs> was shocking. Blasphemy. Shocking. It, it almost yeah. was blasphemy. So it, 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 it's like stealing the king's crown. And how do you like me now? But but it, that we convinced them. Kirk convinced them. Allison convinced them. And, and he did it. And obviously, instant connection. You just know right away that it's TV gold. And then every other school wanted in on that. Yeah. So, yeah. So the first ever headgear was the actual headgear of Brutus. It was. And then he put he put on Brutus. The, the most recent pick he's made, I think, was he picked Ohio State to beat Georgia. Had the same Brutus head on in, in Atlanta. So I think it's the most picked mascot. I think we've been there a lot, and I think he's picked them a lot. Sure. So. I mean, and it's just uh, – I mean, Rod Woodson tells me a great story of him being recruited into college and how, you know, he was Mr. Indiana, right. Rod. And so I, I asked him, like, you know, you went to Purdue. What about Indiana? Like, did And he said Corso – <laughs> recruited did I tell you this story did I ever tell you this story I think I think Lee told it to me at it, one point. okay so is that is that is that he's at his house Corso's coming to visit him Corso rings the doorbell and sits down in in the living room and says you know Rod um I just heard on the radio on the way over here that I've been fired but Indiana is a great place and you should still go there that was the recruiting pitch to Rod Woodson to go play football for the Indiana Hoosiers and you know, that's kind of guy Corso was, but they were fired yeah. on the radio. That's it's how he found he heard, out. What he said, I just heard on the radio, I've been fired. That was the place that gave go. him a lifetime contract and then apparently declared him dead. The president had just told him, You're, you're good. And then boom. But you back got in good... the day, like Woodson must not have been a, a blue chip guy. Oh, they they he must was. have missed. But, he... but how, how was Michigan and Ohio State not in on he him? He said he went to Michigan and, and he saw Bo, uh, Bo peel the paint off the walls during a halftime speech that they were up in a game. He goes, That's not my guy. That's not Because for Bo me. and Woody used to give Corso when he was in Indiana a list of guys they didn't want. Like, this guy, he'd be good for you. I mean, when I'm now, these guys now. <laughs> Come now. on. Really? He would give him a list of, here's well, some Indiana guys we have no, so you should go on. Here's the on guys in the kids. Big Ten region yeah. that, that we can't take. And by the way, there was no 85 scholarship limit, so you right. could take a lot of guys yes, right. back then. Right. But but rather than, he knew he wasn't going to beat those guys head-to-head in recruiting. So they they just were doing him a favor by, hey, here's some guys we think are good, but not good enough for us, but they're good for you. Right. So you recruit him, and then we'll <laughs> beat you by 40. But yeah, knock yourself out. Do you have a good favorite Corso story that you can tell people here? That go through your mind uh, like a good, a good. Other course than of- dropping an f bomb on the air in Houston when he <laughs> did, he really? You don't know that story? No, I don't. Oh, it's on YouTube, <laughs> folks. I mean, do you, you know this story, Chris? You're looking. I mean, no, okay. I, think, I think I've seen it. Okay. okay. I mean, what do you do? Well, we had guest pickers. Yes. Houston played SMU. Carl Lewis, ex Houston great, was yes. the guest picker. SMU was the big underdog, but at that point, Lee liked to. Fake left, go right. Mm-hmm. So rather than being straightforward, Houston's the obvious pick. Yes. Rather than do that, he had to build up some theater. So SMU's colors are red, white, and blue, and he's going through this whole thing where SMU, America's team, red, white, and blue, and he was going to point to the cheerleaders and reference them, point to the Mustang mascot and reference him, and build this whole thing about how could you not love SMU, and then go, whoop, cougar head, gotcha. Right. <laughs> but in a moment of live television... He wasn't in sync with the director. <laughs> and I don't even know if he believed his BS, period. Yes. So he's trying to build up SMU. The visuals are not matching. And he's getting a little frustrated. And I still don't think I can say what he said because you, one of these platforms is probably no, over the true. air. Yes, you and, need yes, to so. clean it up. That's correct. So, that's so he finally just gives up and goes, ah, F it. <laughs> and grabs, grabs the cougar head and puts it on. I've never seen this. You never saw it? No. Oh, you got you to go on YouTube. I got it. I'll show so you. so what do you do? We'll show you I go right. like this and just go <laughs> forehead on desk. Yeah, 2011. Kirk 2011. literally distances himself by pushing his chair <laughs> away from the desk and wheeling it as far as he can get from Corso. <laughs> Carl Lewis is laughing going, yeah. he's looking at Kirk, good thing they have seven second delay. <laughs> and Kirk's going, 
No. <laughs> no, we don't. And because, Rich, you know, you, you've been oh in, in live settings with a lot of noise. Sure. You know, we have these double earpieces that are that, that completely block out outside noise, and they're super loud. you got to crank it really loud to get over yes. the crowd. So I hear, <laughs> F it, as clear as day. But I'm thinking, like, maybe... <laughs> That yeah. wasn't on the air. Maybe it was the speaker, because it was, by the way, blaring on the speaker. I mean, the entire crowd is going crazy. And, <laughs> this is the greatest. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, did I hear that? Was it on the air? And then it was pretty obvious. I, I think I hit my box. Did that go out? And there, the room is like either laughing or silent. Yeah. It, yeah, it went out. And so we had to, you know, Lee, Lee had to go out after the show and do an apology written for him. But the first take wasn't quite good enough because he was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, a word got out and, you know. So this is like post game day alone on the set. The crowd's cleared out. I'm like, yeah, the, that, that, that was the producer. That, that, that was good. It was good. But just need you to not smile. Just be, yeah, right, yeah. be a little more serious. Yeah. Act like you mean it. And uh -huh. then you recorded it and that was it. So. And that yeah, was the, the end of it. The oh Corso F bomb at Houston. I mean, that story is is one of many. There's so many that were behind the scenes where you learn so much from the guy, from his humanity, his sense of show business and theater, but his commitment to the the sport, his passion for it, mm. commitment to players. He was the ex coach that I work with, so you know you've known many, and you, you you get from them what it meant to them to have an impact on young people's lives. Right? It sounds corny. You think they don't care. It's about the money and the fame and the ego. I promise you, for coaches, it's about contributing to these guys' lives, whether it's the high school level, college, NFL, even yes. you know, NFL less maybe because they're grown men and they're millionaires. But, I mean, Corso really bought in and believed all that stuff and still does. And so learning from him, the commitment that he made and what it meant to him to leave is, in his words, a piece of himself mm -hmm. and every guy who played for him was powerful. And so, I mean, there's so many lessons. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.